So here we are. We're live. Namaste, everyone. My name is Greg Prescott from in5d.com. Right there. And I uh, just want to welcome you guys to uh, a quick, semi quick topic today. It's called Is Anyone Else Experiencing Sleep Anomalies? And uh, I see people are starting to file in right now. I'd like to say hello to Eugenia, Laura, Paul. Kara, Christina, um, namaste everyone. Thank you for joining me. And uh, earlier this morning, well, let me uh, back up a little. I had a, uh, last night I went to bed around 11.30 or so, and I woke up at one. I felt like I slept all night, even though I kept, I probably woke up at least two or three times, at least two or three times between 11.30 and 1 o'clock. When I woke up, it felt like I had slept all night. So here it is, 1 o'clock, and I get up, and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? Well, I guess I'll work. <laughs> so I updated uh, N5D Alternative News and uh, worked until probably, I don't know, 7 o'clock or so. And I went out to the beach. Uh, did my little walk of gratitude and and uh, love bubble meditation came back and worked I've been up ever since since one o'clock this morning so I'm going on basically an hour and a half of sleep and I feel great <laughs> so I made a post on Facebook this morning and I got so many responses from other people who are going through the same exact thing and I'm gonna read a few of them the first one is from Georgia, come on. I swear I'm missing time and also waking up and wide awake for hours, strange. And I see we have so many more people joining in right now too. Thank you for joining me. Namaste everyone, Diane, Jessica, Paul, Martha, Rajiv, Kathy, Sue, uh, saying me too, this has been going on for years now. Sherry, Melky, Reiki, Kathleen, Hera, Bridget. Wow, so many people are here. Thank you for joining me. Um, some more comments. Jill Straub says, I've not been sleeping well, waking up and can't get back to sleep. Time feels like it's speeding up. Energies have been weird since the eclipse. <laughs> I guarantee a lot of us have been feeling the same thing too. Since that eclipse, there's been some pretty powerful energies that are going on. And uh, just glancing at the chat, wow, so many people here. Hi, everyone. Uh, Carrie Ann Faye says, yeah, I'm experiencing the same. Glenda, hi, Glenda. LaDonia Hill, same here, namaste. Uh, Ella Royer, yes, yeah, sleep is all over the place, definitely. Um, hello, Carmen, Stacy LeClaire. Hi, Stace. Nikki McMullen, I had a crazy dream that I was in the South Pole. And there were children there. My daughter was kidnapped in my dream, and I figured out that's where they're keeping many, many children. Wow, that's something. So it's almost like a dream and remote viewing at the same time, or a parallel lifetime. Okay, so uh, moving on, Stephen Budner says, the source of sleep anomalies are dream anomalies. With each passing day, our solar system moves deeper into a strange new region of space. Mia Hoggett says, yes, sleeping one to three hours, then awake. Seeing images through shut eyelids closed, and I can see my aura swirling around my body, heart beating fast. Uh, Mia, what you're doing right now, you're actually tapping into your third eye. Um, I have an article on, third, um, on how to awaken your third eye, and you do it right before you go to bed, and you'll start seeing all that stuff. Um, I'll post a link after this video is done right here, and you can check out that article. But yeah, you're, that's, you're tapping into your third eye right there. Rochelle Steneforth says, yeah, this has been happening to me for a long time now. Last night I was asleep by 11 p.m., then woke up at 12.40 p.m. But I swear I had been asleep for hours. I think she meant 12.40 a.m., which is basically the same thing I did. You know, it's uh, an hour and 40 minutes of sleep is all she got. Excuse me. <clears throat> Jay Lee Galanti says, yeah, husband and I knocked, knocked out and took a nap around 7 p.m. Awoke at midnight and still up. 
We woke as though we had slept clear through the night, so rested. Strange sleep patterns with the solar winds, etc. So, um, and once again, uh, we're going to the solar winds and the solar eclipse and uh, so many different things that are happening right now with the energies changing. Just want to say hi to Shelly Joe. Namaste. Gail, it's 4.30 a.m. here and I've been up all night. Okay, she must be, Gail must be in Australia. Carmen Quinones, I slept too little at night, but during the day, I also have to take naps. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I love my naps. Um, but today I haven't taken one. Okay, uh, say hi to Barbara, Eugenia, Ortiz. Time is an illusion. I completely agree. It's quite the illusion though when um, we're all having the same time anomaly at the same time. Time. Hi to Mike Magcella, Terje Kushk, Nisha, Lisa, Van V. Greg, thanks for sharing. So nice to know I'm not alone in this. You're definitely not alone, Lisa. We're all in this together. The, that eclipse had me vibrating since before it. Wow. I had a, a, a really strange vibration the other day as well. So um, I think many of us are experiencing a lot of the same things. Uh, Dana Wang, I also have this feeling that something big or bad like a storm is coming. Well, there is a big storm, uh, Hurricane Irma, that's on the Atlantic, uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, <laughs> as fate would have it, um, Michelle and I are going on a cruise on Monday, and we get back on Friday. So I think that, and we're going to Nassau, which is out there by the hurricane. So uh, I think what we're going to do is um, put our energy into it, into uh, diverting it, and making sure that it doesn't hit land or affect many people at all. So it's something we have to do, and we're still going to go, we're going to do it, and uh, it's gonna be fun. Jill Nichols said she saw energy waves. Uh, Juan Carlos, same here, two days without good sleep, feeling tired, energetics, hugs from Aruba. I love Aruba, it's beautiful there. Uh, Rhonda Terry, we are rebooting. I love that explanation. That's really good. And I've got some, so many other possibilities here, too, that I'll get into. Um, hello, Paige. Joyce, strange dreams, awakening, confused. Oh, my God, there's so many comments here. I, I can't get to them all right now. Um, let's see, where did I leave off? Okay, right here, Deborah Ann. Um, on comments that these are just comments that I'm reading right now um, from the comments that I received this morning when I woke up at 1 a.m. Deborah Ann, same here, woke up at 1 a.m. expecting it to be light and time to get up. It's more than just a coincidence when this happens to so many people. Gary Ibrayani, up every 20 minutes, seems like I sleep in two timelines Weird dreams that I can't remember. Speaking of dreams, this is a really cool one I had two nights ago. I was in a restaurant, but it seemed more like a, like a house. And I, there was a big speaker up on top of a table. So I'm just sitting there and I'm, I'm acting like I'm playing guitar, yet I had no guitar in front of me. And what I was playing was coming out the speaker, note for note. I was playing the lead to an ACDC song called uh, Live Wire. And uh, I was just playing that lead. And even though it was an air guitar, I was transferring my thoughts from what my fingers were doing into the speaker. And every, everyone could hear it. It was so cool. I think that's where we're going to in 5D and beyond. I don't even think there's a need for instruments because we're going to be creating our own sounds or things that are replicating sounds that we've already been familiar with. But I think we can create our own sounds, our own music uh, without the need for any instrument. And I think that was the, the message of that dream. Here's a really interesting comment by Jed Riverstone. I felt huge timeline collapses, merges yesterday and last night. Lots of body-mind symptoms. Woke up slammed 
and feeling like I might not even get out of bed today, which is very rare unless I'm very sick. Then suddenly, ding, it's time to get up. Felt it all settle and another whole newness in the world today, new earth being born more and more into this reality every day now, at least from my perspective. That's an awesome perspective, Jed. Thank you. Okay, just peeking up here. Um, Nikki McMullen, yes, everything has been super intense. It's been raining for two days, very symbolic of a cleansing. Very good, yeah, definitely. And we look at all these hurricanes that are happening here and the, uh, the rainfall that's happening as well in the United States, especially from Hurricane Harvey, which is going up the East Coast right now. A lot of rain there and a lot of rain coming from Hurricane Irma as well. So yeah, it, it can be cleansing and there, there can be good things that do come out of it. Let's just hope that this next hurricane just kind of stays out in the ocean. And that's what Michelle and I will be working on um, next week. Uh, Reiki Latraverse says we need to clear a lot of past lifetimes so we can be lighter to be in 5D. Fear is like a resistance and removing fear gives your energy back. Gives, gives you back your energy and consciousness. Having more energy will make you see the fifth dimension, which always existed. And um, I, I, a lot of us do believe that fifth dimension, yeah, it's already there. It already exists. The new earth already exists. And some people are going in and out of dimensions right now. And we do that through our dreams. For example, that, that dream I just had the other night about playing guitar, yet there was no guitar in front of me and the sound was coming out. We're definitely going in and out of dimensions. <laughs> Sherry Lee Ann Fowler, Christopher, says, feels like rocket fuel has been injected in me. Hopefully it's not 150 proof. Uh, Tammy Tony, I can't sleep to save my life. And Stacy LeClaire says, do you think it will be easier for us to open our third eye with these new energies coming in? Well, if the previous comment, I forgot what her name was, I think it might have been Mia, but I'm not sure, um, is any indication that the veil is lifting and the most opportune time, Stacy, to do that is right before you go to sleep and apparently as soon as you wake up. So once again, I highly recommend checking out that article and I'll post the link again right here um, to that article on, that shows you how to open up your third eye right uh, when you go to bed and what, when you're in bed. So it's so easy to do. Um, anyone can do this. And uh, you know, the, you, you see all these articles on how to open up your third eye and it's all this long drawn out process on how to do it, but it's real simple. I break it down really easily and uh, hope you check it out and let me know if you're able to open up your third eye. Hi to everyone that just joined me. Namaste to everyone for being here. So glad that you can join me uh, in an impromptu Facebook Live. Oh, just a few more comments here and then I'll move on. Uh, Chaffee, Chaffee Klein said, yes to me. He woke up at 3 a.m., 3 a.m., wide awake, went to sleep two to three hours ago. It keeps happening. Uh, my sister, Tara Celine Jordan, for the last three days, my dreams have been crazy and so real. I can recall all of them. So I wonder if other people out there are um, having more or better dream recollection right now. I know some people are, have a hard time remembering their dreams, but I'm just wondering if you guys um, are finding that with these energies, you're able to recall your dreams. And if so, are they more bizarre? Are they more positive, negative? Uh, let me know. Diane Gloria, our DNA is activating. Our entire biochemistry is changing. We're becoming more and more crystalline. We're not going to need much sleep, nor much food. Some of us will just want smoothies. I like that. Uh, Betty Kelly says, yes, I haven't slept well for several days. Don't really know why or how to turn it around just wide awake all or most nights. And the last one I have here is uh, Lisa Porter Cook. Like most others here, I'm the same. Last night, I 
I really barely slept at all. The energies are crazy too, so intense. About half the time, I feel like I'm sort of floating just outside my body. And you probably are. Uh, saying hi to everyone that's here. Uh, Jill Nichols, Dean Chambers, my ex-wife Amy, my daughter's mother, Bella Swansong. Namaste to all of you. So, boy, I've got a lot, lot to cover here. I was doing some research on why we're having these sleep anomalies, why we're waking up and feeling like we're totally recharged, why you might only sleep for a few hours and feel like you've slept all night. And these are some of the things that I found, okay? So there's an article on N5D, it's called, What Does Ascension Feel Like? And it says, one reason that you're sleeping more is that you're having difficulty, difficulty staying grounded while you are awake. We can interchangeably use the idea of being grounded and descending, they are the same. Being grounded does not mean shutting down your awareness of higher information. It just means that, it just means being strongly rooted in the earth while, while it is coming in. So you can be a conduit rather than having information get stuck coming or going. As you spend more time consciously into your physical body than you were before, you require more sleep. Prior to moving into ascension, you were not as present as you thought you were. As you have moved into ascension, you have moved more fully into your body. And so by doing that, when you leave your body, it is more observable. You feel tired and you sleep more or when you have emotions, or you are more physically moved into your body, you feel more strongly than you do when you are ungrounded, because that is part of the physical experience. So what I'm getting from that is, um, it is one of the ascension symptoms, and we've read about that numerous times on other various articles. Um, so uh, consider that a positive thing. In another article called 12 Signs of Your Awakening Consciousness, one can expect unusual sleep patterns. It's likely that you'll awaken many nights between 2 o'clock and 4 a.m. There's a lot of work going on within you, and it often causes you to wake up for a breather. And as you know, when we sleep, we go into that, that multidimensional realm where you're not just doing one thing, that one thing that you can remember in that one, one or two or three dreams that you had that night. You're all over the place. You're doing so many different things. And many times you're doing things that you're not allowed to remember. Take a look at the comments over here. Lemon water works great for dreaming. Thank you. I can't believe it was that easy. Yeah, uh, I told my ex-wife she was having a hard time uh, remembering her dreams. And according to Sonia Chiquette, Sonia Chiquette recommended that you have some lemon water. Place that on a nightstand by your bed. Uh, have, a, have a drink of that before you go to bed. Ask your guides and angels also to help you remember your dreams, and I'm so glad that that worked for you. <laughs> Kia Le Levine, I keep losing out, uh, time, hours and days. I'm gonna be talking about that in, in a few minutes, Kia, so stay tuned. Also, I love it when you guys put where you're from, because. It's, it just blows me away to see how connected we all are. Like we, I, I read something earlier, we had a gentleman from Aruba. I love seeing where you're from. So throw that in there as well. Okay, moving on. In the article, Symptoms of Energy Shifts, waking in the morning and struggling to get out of bed after a full night of sleep or falling asleep in the middle of the afternoon is common. This is caused when the energy is shifting throughout the whole spiritual body. This will pass in time. Each person has a different time frame. For some it can be weeks, for others months, for others years. If you can create a pyramid structure to sit under this, to sit under, this will give you wonderful boosts of energy when you are lacking it. Drink lots of pure water, to hydrate the cells, add crystals to energize the water, eat light meals with organic veggies, do light physical exercise, and that will stimulate the energy flow through the body. 
Bach remedies, flower essences, and essential oils will also help the transition. Now, what I'm feeling after all that, all that's been said and done, it really boils down to time, period. Um, and you can look at it any way you want, but you have to go within for the answers. And for me, going within, is it all boils down to time. Our perception of time is changing. How else can you explain sleeping for an hour or two or maybe three and, and having it feel like it's been all night? Ian Lungold stated that time was speeding up because creation was speeding up. Creation is speeding up. In other words, more was happening in less time. And he goes on to say, when more is possible to happen in every mom moment, there's the possible outcomes. There is more possible outcomes, which opens the door to things called miracles. So when more things can happen in a smaller amount of time, more miracles can happen as well. And then Terrence McKenna, the late, the, unfortunately, Terrence McKenna and Lungold, they're no longer with us. Um, but they have amazing insights and information. And uh, I'm sure that they're there on the new earth, helping to seed it and waiting for us to catch up to them. But Terrence McKenna talked about his time wave, time wave zero theory, where he proposed that time is spiraling towards the singularity, where all possibilities become condensed into one reality. McKenna noted these changes in time mirror current events with past events in a cyclic manner that repeat over and over again, but each time on a shorter cycle until the singularity is met. So these are all just time possibilities. Um, and as you know, time is only relevant to the planet that we live on. I've, I've used this example before, and it, you know, for those who haven't seen this before, I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. If you lived on Mars, Mars has a typical day of about 28, 29 hours long. So their days are longer, which means one day there is probably, you know, maybe four or five hours longer than it is here. If you're, let's say you're 35 years old here on Earth, on Mars, you might be 28, 29. <laughs> It, you know, it, time is only relevant to the planet that you are incarnated on. That's it. Um, when you cross over to the other side, time is non-existent. Um, your your multi-dimensional self that's over there doesn't take time out to go to sleep. Your your loved ones who are no longer with us right now, they're up twenty four seven. There is no twenty four seven as a matter of fact, but that's you know just a cliche that we say. But they're up constantly. Uh, there, you don't need sleep on the other side. Time is a construct of this third dimension. Now, some people would, would say that, you know, and it is possible that depression might cause a change in your sleeping habits. But from what I can tell, that's not a, a factor with many people that are, are doing their work, that are staying grounded, you know, and doing all the things that we're supposed to be doing as we raise our vibrations. The late Jose Arguez looked into Lord Pacal. He's a Mayan um, uh, elder back in, uh, gosh, the mid 1400s. I, I don't know, remember specifically. But um, the one thing that Jose Arguez got out of um, deciphering everything from Lord Pacal's tomb was that Lord Pacal stressed that we need to live without time. As a matter of fact, the last five days on the Mayan calendar is called time of no time because there's 360 days in the calendar and then the last four or five days, I'm not sure, depending on whether there's a leap year or not, um, is the time without with, with no time. So that was the one, the most important thing that Jose Arguez was saying that you know we need to live without time. And it, you know, you look at everything. We have TV programs, TV schedules that lock us into little blocks of time. We have the work week, work schedules. We're constantly blocked into time. You'll notice I, I never wear a watch. I could care less what time it is. 
you know, every day is Sunday, every day is Monday. It doesn't matter. They're all the same to me. But certain things, you know, if I have a, like I'm doing a radio show or a conference or something like that, of course, I need to know about that. And in the back of my mind, I'll keep a, a note of that. But I really do try to live without time. And I highly encourage you, even if it's only on, you know, if you're working all week and you only have the weekend off, live without time during the weekend. OK, try to you know, remove the watch. Don't look at schedules and stuff like that. Get away from time because that keeps us locked into this third dimensional reality. Okay, let me take a look at the comments here. And hello, Beatrice, who just joined us. Uh, Taryn Bedick says, I used to remember my dreams very clearly for about a year now. I can't remember, and when I do, they are very strange. Well, like I said before, um, as I mentioned to uh, Bella, um, try, try, try using that glass of lemon water by your bedside Take a sip right before you go to bed and ask your guides and angels to help you uh, remember those dreams. Okay, so another possibility is that timelines are collapsing. And we see this evidenced through the Mandela effect, where what's happening is we're merging into the greatest and highest possible timeline for humanity's best interests. And we're seeing that big time right now. So that might be another you know, thing that we're experiencing with these timelines collapsing is the lack of sleep that is needed. Um, maybe on the new timeline, we don't need sleep. Just like where we're heading um, as multidimensional beings, as light bodies, we don't need sleep. So this might be another um, instance where we're just acclimating. We're getting used to something that's going to happen in the hopefully inevitable near future. Another thing is the glitches in time that we're experiencing. Um, a lot of us have gone through these different glitches in time. Um, I know that the, the one that sticks out the most for me is that I used to live in this one house and there was a VFW on the corner with this huge tank there. And it was so easy to know where my house was because I'd turn right there every time. So one night I'm it's about, well, I said one night, it was in winter. It was probably like eight o'clock, but it was dark out by then. Uh, anyway, I take a left by that tank and I go down the street and all of a sudden there's nothing. I could, I could, I didn't see anything. And uh, anything that was recognizable from my street. And uh, 